All right, what I have here today is an advanced PCG graph that is going to focus on creating a realistic and organic looking forest with parameters for things like roads, lakes, rivers, and account for things like slopes on cliffs or mountains. Alright, and right over here you can see our path spline. As you can see here, we can change the size of the road path and clear out the forest by making it as narrow or as wide as you need it to be. And the same can be done with water bodies like this river and lake. Alright, before we actually start, make sure you have all your plugins enabled. That's the procedural content generation framework, the experimental water plugin, and the landmass plugin. Alright. First create an actor blueprint, add a spline component, and then a PCG component. Create the main graph you'll be using and drag and drop it into here. If you look over here, you'll see the variables being used as parameters for our PCG graph. You can go ahead and create them now or later once the graph is complete. Now time to get into the actual PCG graph. First get spline data from self, then add a spline sampler set to interior. Also create a second spline sampler that samples on the spline. From there create a distance node and set the source as the interior and the target as the spline border. Follow this with a scale by density to scale down the trees near the border and project the points onto the landscape. Now create a density noise and split our points into four filters. These branches will control the ratio of the objects the graph will spawn. Create a normal density node and plug this into a distance maps multiply node. The target for the distance node is going to be our water bodies, mainly lakes and rivers. First create two git spline data nodes and set the actor filters to all the world actors. The actor selection is going to be by class and select the classes of water bodies you'll be using. In our case that's water body lake and water body river. Connect each one into its own sampler and set to interior. Then merge the points and plug those into our distance node. The original distance I used here was 2200 before I had it set to be controlled by the blueprint. Now credits to Michael Royalty for this next part. What we're about to do is scale down the size of our trees according to their distance to the water bodies, cliffs, and sloped ground. First start with a point filter and set the operator to greater than and the target attributes to density. The type should be double and set the value around 0.8. Now create a distance node and plug the inside filter to source and the outside filter to target. Plug this into an add attribute node. Name it minmax and set the type vector to 2. Here's where you set how small you want your trees to be scaled in the x value and y as the max scale of the largest trees. Plug these values into a math blurb node setting the first input as our minmax x. The input is y, the input 3 is sensity, and our output as density. Then finally use a mass multiply with input 1 as scale, input 2 as density, and output to scale. With this any points within certain range of our water bodies, paths, and cliffs will be shrunk down. It's a bit hard to see the effect at the moment so I'll disable the mesh spawners. and also debug the distance node to highlight the points affected. Up next we'll use the transform points to set the absolute rotation, 
and override the rotation values we receive from the landscape, while also adding some additional randomness to the rotation values in our scale. Add a balance modifier to fit our points to our actual tree size and self prune. Next, add a difference node and set to binary. We'll use this one to cut away our three points near the border in exchange for bushes. This will have the effect of making our inner forest thicker with trees and the outer forest thinner with more shrubs and bushes. We'll use one of the density filter branches we made earlier, feed it into a normal density node, and filter out any points that spawn on their slopes. Use transfer points to randomize the scale and rotation, follow that with a balance modifier and a self prune. Next is the distance and filter node that we'll be using to define the inner and outer forest. The target is a projection node that is linked up to the spline sampler made earlier for the spline border. Alright, let's re-enable the trees and bushes so we can see. Up next is the road path, set up a distance and filter node to cut away the tree points. Then create a skit spline data with the actor filter set all world actors and select by tag. At this point, create a spline blueprint with the tag you want to use. It doesn't need to have anything else except the spline and the tag. Plug this into a spline sampler and set the distance on spline with an increment of 100. And then a balance model with an X set to 3, a Y to 50, and a Z to 60. And with this, the main trees are done. From here, we'll be using subgraphs to spawn smaller subtrees, bushes, and grass around these main trees. These same subgraphs can be duplicated as many times over as you need to further spawn scatter objects like leaves, logs, sticks, and whatever else your environment needs. Let's open one up so you can see what goes on inside. Start with a create point screen. The grid extent and size will be fine tuned by parameters later, but for now, set extents to 1000 by 1000 and size by 400 by 400. Use a balance mod to adjust the point size by 72. Add a copy points after that. Then plug the subgraphs main input into the target. After this, use a transform points to randomize the placement and scale, and add a density noise and filter to control the quantity. What follows after that is the projection of landscape and a normal density to filter out points on the slope. Once set up, the subgraph can be dragged and dropped into the main graph as many times as you need, and also as many other graphs as you want. Now the only thing between here and the spawn are a series of different nodes to ensure nothing overlaps. It looks a bit like spaghetti, but we're just making sure our trees and bushes don't spawn on top of other objects. Our bush spawner also has a distance filter node to pull them back from the water edge if they happen to be too close. Another thing we'll be using these different nodes for is to cut out some clearings to keep things from being too uniform. Using our first spline sampler, plug this into a projection node followed by a density noise and filter combo to reduce the amount of points used. Then use the transform points to randomize the placement, rotation, and size. The randomization here should be pretty extreme. The offset min and max here could be as far as negative and positive as 1000, and the scale as small as 0.25 and as large as times 15. These clearings will go into the different nodes we had above. Now we have clearings that can break things up to stop things from becoming too homogenous. The next part of the graph we'll need to look at are the rock points. Take one of the branches we made earlier and reduce the amount of points further with density noise and filter. Next, add a normal to density and filter to control the slope our rocks will spawn on. A transform points to randomize rotation and scale. And the bond here does nothing, we can ignore that one. 
At a merge node next, we'll be adding some additional rock points from the outer bounds of the forest later. Next, add a distance and filter set for a road spline, just like the one we made for our trees. Next, we're going to make a new subgraph for our rocks. The base is just like our first subgraph, with a few additional things added at the end. Again, credits to Michael Royalty for this fixing offset when scaling tutorial. What these nodes basically do is scale your offsets along with the scale of your objects, meaning that large objects will be affected more than your small objects when using transform point nodes to shift points up or down. First, take your transform points with the scaling and plug those into another transform points with your offsets. Use a math subtract for the new position C with the old position C. Then multiply the result with the scale and add the output back into your points. The effect is barely noticeable here because the rocks are close and stale. But if it looked odd if the rocks were much larger yet always exactly on top of the landscape instead of being buried deeper in the earth as larger rocks tend to be. Alright, now that that's done, we can route our rocks and sub-rocks into their respective spawners after a few more difference nodes for our clearings and paths. Alright, the next part is the outer forest that will spread out from the edge of the spline boundaries. First take the spline sampler we use to define the border of our forest, then use a bonds modifier to adjust the size of the points. Point 0.75 on the X, point 0.75 on the Y, and 100 on the Z. Then it transform points to randomize the scale, rotation, and use the offsets to spread the points outward. Add a projection node, and then a normal to density and a density filter pair to filter the slope. The second transformation node over here is redundant. I'll have to remember to move some of the additional scaling happening here onto the first one. Now add a density noise that we'll be using to split off the forest border points into rocks, trees, bushes, and scatter. Create four density filter branches for this. One of them will be for the rocks, the other for the subtrees, third for the bushes, and the fourth for the scatter. Which now leads on to the scattered part of the graph. Take the last of the four filter ranges we made at the very beginning, and from here we repeat a lot of the same nodes we used before but with different settings. Add a balance mod with a 2 for the y axis, a distance node and filter for our bodies of water with a distance of 900, and then drag and drop another copy of our subgraph that we'll use for twigs, branches, and leaves. Plug the results into a distance node for our road spline and set a distance of 1800 followed by a density focus. In the bottom portion of this, add the transform points to randomize scale rotation and offset. And the following transform points is to push your objects back down onto the ground since the projection node places things directly on top of the landscape. Then self prune and add a difference node for our trees. Then we add the mesh spawner for our logs. Now back up to the top part, add a different node and target the rocks. Then add a density noise and point filter to split the points with a value of 0.25. Meaning that 25% of the points will become leaf scatter, and the remaining 75% will become twigs and branch scatter.
Okay, so a bit of embarrassing moment there. I couldn't find my scatter points because I forgot to give my scatter density parameter a value. So it got set to zero. Anyway, that is our forest PCG graph. Very versatile in what it can do, and with a change to parameters and spawners can be adjusted for almost any environment. But we're not completely done yet, because we're going to use the landmass plugin with our slime to carve our path into the landscape's height and change the terrain. What you see here is what the landmass plugin does on its own. You can move the land patch around and scale it to either lower or raise the height. And over here you can see its effect when used on a spline. The blueprint itself is just a blueprint with one component in it, the landscape circle height patch. Get started with a get spline data, target the spline path by the actor tag, add a spline sampler with a distance along the spline of 325, add a projection node to sit down the landscape patches, then the transform points to push the patches down, the extent modifier that comes after is for visual clarity and doesn't functionally affect the graph. Finally, union the points before feeding them into the actor spawner. That's all for now. I think with a little more time the graph could be further optimized for faster generation, but its functionality is complete. Before I end the video, I have uploaded the PCG graphs to Gumroad, so if you feel like supporting a broke developer, you can go and download these graphs from the links below.